right here. What is what okay. is your obsession with France? French stuff? <sighs> what uh, is my obsession is, with France? Is it is it the love the love of pan? The love of bread? Love of bun. Um pan, bread. I don't know. I just love French history. Interesting. Uh, I will say when I was young, much younger, like middle school, I was I was really interested in the idea of kings. Like you know, because we're American, like, like yeah, presidents and like yeah, you know, we got rid of it. We're yeah. like we 1774. Then, before that, that didn't happen. 1776, my friend. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> July 4th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, July 4th, 1776. Yeah. Um, but the idea of a king really fascinated me. Where like, oh, you just like listen to whatever the king says. And of hmm. course, I'm not I'm not like, oh, I'm power hungry. I want that. It was just like crazy how like oh the king controls every aspect of your country and that actually was louis the 14th he was known as the mm. sun king right so like he called the, he called himself the sun king so everything revolves around him and yeah like that idea oh. fascinated me yeah it's a pretty cool nickname it, 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 so it just fascinated me and then on top of that it was like france at the time was like it influenced all of europe like it had the it had the best beauty and architecture, the the culture. Everybody wanted to be like the French, and at the time, they were the most powerful on the continent. Like they always had the strongest armies under Louis the Fourteenth, and then it hmm. dipped for a while, and then it's like Napoleon brought it back up. They're like the strongest by far, and it's just like. I think that's what's what like has so. always fascinated me about Europe is like they have that. I don't want to say power struggle where it's like, oh, not you're like, oh, you're in charge. Oh, you're in charge. Oh, we have the king. We have a king. Mm, different like, balance of power, like, you're saying. Yeah. As yeah. an American, it's kind of like, okay, you guys do you. We'll just be our own. Uh, and True. Yeah. Yeah, was I, like, I, yeah. Yeah. We'll do the same, eh? Except for the French French lady <laughs> who's in charge. Like um, 51st state. No, but. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, no. America's I, that, hat. That's we're, very we're okay true. In the about, that's very true about. Um, Yes, America is like we're just focused on ourselves, um, yeah. historically in that sense. And then you look at Europe; there's just like constant wars and like different different things going on. And yeah, it's like this is a king, this is a king. We battled them, we fought them, like yeah, territorial yeah. changes and stuff. But like you said, like I just I'm, I don't know. I'm always fascinated by the idea of kings. And then Louis the Fourteenth was kind of like the most grand, but French like, and not like English or anything. But or the point, yeah, the point I'm trying to make is like they were the most powerful. So I like hmm. gravitated toward that toward, towards that idea. And like, okay, if you look at Versailles and you look at there's other great palaces, like there's a one in Austria. Oh, man, what's the name? Oh, Schönbrunn, Schönbrunn, Winter Palace. Um, you could be making names up. I wouldn't yeah. know. I'm not the history guy, Johnny. Yeah, Buckingham Palace. There's many great palaces. The Escorial in Spain. They honestly are nothing compared to Versailles. Like if you look hmm. at images, it's just like Versailles is like it's probably the size of all four of those combined. Like, probably. I mean, I don't know, but, like, it's humongous, okay? Now, the funny thing you said about the, about the king thing, you know, why why France? It's like a little little aside. Um, so, Versailles has, like, hundreds of fountains, water fountains. Hmm. And it's just, like, a grand paradise in a way for a king. And I read this once, and I'm not sure if it's fully true, but basically... To conserve water, uh, they would turn off the you know turn off the fountains. But whenever Louis was walking with his people or whatever walking towards one of the fountains, the attendants had to immediately turn it off. Like turn it on, <laughs> turn it on. Well, the kids come, turn it on, turn it on. And okay, then it's okay, like okay. the beautiful fountain. He walk, he runs, away, he walks away. It's like they turn it off. That's what I remember reading somewhere. And it's just like that kind of idea is just. I mean, it's obviously bonkers, but it's just like pretty cool in a way. Like. That kind of power. And it's like rolling out the red carpet for everything. Every time. Every yeah. moment. Right. And yes, it's it's if the British were like that, if the British were the cultural center of Europe for like 200 years, I probably would have gravitated towards Britain. But like French architecture, French art, French uh, military, 
kings, that idea was like the, the dominant. Um, well, as the non history yeah. guy, I know that like France did have other colonies outside of France, but yes. wasn't England the one who was like, we can take over the world. And it was like, they had British in yeah. like empires and colonies all over the world. Yes. Like would and, that and, not and... be something that was the Britain really became a superpower in the 1800s, and that was okay. that was when France was like, a little too uh, late. Yeah, yeah, France was already was already on the was on the descending, and um, like I said in our previous video about generals, uh, Napoleon helped regrow that French image of just like beauty, dominance. That makes sense. Yeah. So I I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I will say this. Um, another thing 